A new champion has emerged on Stadium Championship Series Red as Mike Christensen is looking to pilot Vendetta to back-to-back -back wins. Covenard continued his rise up the leaderboard with another racing win. But can he lead the Black Pearl back to the top of the podium? And the battle for the series title is between two men, Adam Anderson and Camden Murphy. Who will lead Minneapolis as the series points leader? Find out next on Monster Chan. Today, 34,000 fans are on hand at U.S. Bank Stadium in Minneapolis to see who will come away with the series points lead. Hello, everyone. I'm Scott Jordan, alongside the leader of Zombie Nation, Barry Musauer. And this series is the talk of Monster Jam Barry. Adam Anderson now only trails Camden Murphy by four points. That is the closest series out of the five U.S. tours. Camden has been on an amazing slide backwards on the series points leaderboard. Do you expect that to continue here tonight in round 14? Man, I hope not. I hope not for Camden's sake. I hope not for the fans' sake. Uh, I think the pressure's really getting to him, Scott. So he's really going to have to put that all behind him and keep his foot on the gas. But you know he's going to do it with a smile on his face no matter what. Vendetta's Mike Christensen has been on the run of his career. He followed a freestyle win in Houston with a skills win in Minneapolis, and that would ultimately lead him to his first career event championship. What do you see in Barry from Mike in this midseason surge? I think he's just starting to gel with his new uh, Vendetta Monster Jam truck. Sometimes it takes a little bit of time to get used to a brand new truck, and he's coming into his own very well here midseason. So I look for big things here for Mike. And a run like this really uh, cements Team Throttle Monsters, one of the top teams in Monster Jam, right? Absolutely and he's in one of his favorite stadiums. He's a big Vikings fan, so kudos off to the whole Throttle Monster team for giving Mike that awesome truck here. Vendetta sounds great. It looks great, too. And sometimes you have to take advantage of the opportunities that present themselves. Mike lost three races last round, still won the event championship. Is that just a testament to his perseverance and his equipment? Absolutely. He was ready to go. He kind of took the luck that was given to him, and he, he capitalized off of it. So you got to be ready at a moment's notice because anything could happen here at Monster Jam. Uh, he was definitely ready. And earlier today, we caught up with the recently crowned Round 13 event champion in this UNOH pit report. Everybody always considered us the underdog, and, you know, yeah, we're a good team, but, you know, do we really compete? And here we are, man. We're competing. I, I've always imagined myself uh, being good enough to, to win. Freestyle to win a racing, um, but to actually uh, come out on top of an overall event championship with the caliber of trucks we got, like it, it's it's a dream come true, man. It's been a wild ride. With the new Eddie Mike chassis I have, it's a complete upgrade from what I was in. It's a lower truck. It's it's bad fast and uh, it's kind of hasn't really changed the way I drive, but I, I trust the truck a lot more than what I did in previous years. And I've never had such a good piece behind me. It helps me, motivates me to keep pushing. Love this place. U.S. Bank Stadium has been amazing to me. Hopefully come out on top again. Mike's confidence continues to rise. That's a good thing because this series full of drivers ready to take that title away from him. Barry, who do you think will make some noise here in Minneapolis? I've got my eye on Adam Anderson because Adam lost last round by one point and Adam does not like to lose. So I know he's a, got a point to prove out here tonight and I think he can do it. Well, as we said earlier, Camden Murphy still the series points leader with Adam Anderson trailing now by just four points. That lead could easily change hands in one competition. Bryce Kenny remains in third, Tom Mentz in fourth, and Colvin Art has been solidifying that fifth spot. Now, the drivers will compete tonight in racing the Great Clip Skills Challenge, and freestyle points will be awarded based on finish, with the winner earning 12, and the driver with the most points at the end of the event is crowned the overall event champion. Time for track talk. Last round, the racing competition may have been the most chaotic I've ever seen. Five trucks didn't even cross the finish line. You and I spoke about the strategy on how to approach the corners here, but from a mental standpoint, how do you expect drivers to adjust today? You really just have to put that behind you and really focus on what the truck tells you it's doing on the dirt tonight. 
It's a new day. Hopefully we can see a lot of close races here tonight. As Mike said, you have to trust the truck. And I know that sounds kind of funny, but it, it, it's a true statement, right? It's true. You have to have confidence in your ability and your equipment. First competition of the night is racing. So let's take a look at the racing bracket. And the round one matchups are set. And in round one, it'll be Jester against Max D. Vendetta versus Megalodon Kraken against El Toro Loco. And Souls are fortunate to get Great Clips, Mohawk Warrior, Velociraptor, Black Pearl, Grave Digger, Bakugan Dragonoid, all getting those first round buys. Barty, what do you like here in round one? I really like that matchup with Soldier Fortune versus Great Clips Mohawk Warrior. Bryce Kenny, he's in the home of Great Clips, so there's a little bit of added pressure there. I'd like to see if he can rise to the occasion. We're not going to waste any time to see who can rise to the occasion. Let's go to the track at U.S. Bank Stadium. And this matchup was supposed to be Jester against Max D. Jester getting pulled off the track and taken back to the pit area. Never want to see that. So we move on now to Mike Christensen in Vendetta coming off of that event championship. He goes up against Todd LaDuke in Megalodon. And we are ready to start the first competition of the night. We are off and running in Minneapolis, dead even to the chalk line, and into the corner we go. Todd Ledoux takes it tonight, but look at Mike Christensen on the far side of the track, Barry. Wow, Mike Christensen nailed that first turn. Let's see if this last turn will tell the tale, and it does. Todd Ledoux emerges victorious. Man, he had to make up a lot of time there, though. Whipping across that finish line. Let's take a look at the original Super Glue glued to the action replay. I thought Mike Christensen had this race won, but you see he hits the brakes right there. He hesitated. You can never hesitate at a Monster Jam race. You've got to have that smooth momentum all the way across the finish line. Now next on the track, it is Jamie Garner and El Toro Loco out of Fortville, Indiana, and out of Osteen, Florida. Nick Pagliarulo in crack, and this is their first meeting of the season. Jamie comes in at 11-9 with one win, but Nick Pagliarulo giving a little bit of something to him right now as we go into that first turn, and it is wide for both drivers into the straightaway. Wow, that was a great hole shot off the starting line from Nick Pagliarulo in Kraken, and he carries it across the finish line for the win. Jamie Garner with two deep on the near side turn. Nick Pagliarulo takes advantage, and he will advance. Take a look at the original Super Glue replay. That front clip of Kraken being gone has got to improve the vision immensely to be able to get around those turn pods nice and tight and fast. Next up in round one, Bryce Kenny, Great Clips Mohawk Warrior against Caleb Blood in Soldier Fortune. Bryce two and one against Caleb this season. 16 and seven on the year with two wins. Great racing season. And it is Great Clips Mohawk Warrior into the turn first. But look at Caleb Blood, she goes tight. And it is Soldier Fortune with the lead. Wow, Bryce carried that momentum of the whole shot a little too far into that turn and opened the door up for Kayla. And look at that, she's across the finish line. You gotta finish the race and Kayla Blood does it. Take a look at the original Super Glue glue to the action replay. Kayla nailed both of these turns. She stayed nice and tight and carried that momentum, which means she had the shortest path to that finish line first. It's gotta be an upset win here for Kayla Blood in round one. That brings us to our final round one race. It's a bye run for Tom Mance. Jester, who was just towed off the track moments ago, still being repaired, and we're being towed. It is a broken solenoid, but this, as you see, a great shot there of the Tom Fullery Motorsports crew taking a look at that truck. So Tom gets a buy run, but you can't lay off the gas here. Absolutely not. You have to put your best foot forward because this is your qualifying time for the next round. So Tom, albeit he hits that pod right there, you'd never want to do that. So he's lucky he doesn't have an opponent in the other lane. He knows his track very well. He's got two career wins in 10 starts at U.S. Bank Stadium. Does make it across the finish line, and he will advance with a time of 17.551. So Max D moving on to round two. He will meet Travis Mowry. Colvinard going one-on-one -on -one with Todd LaDuke. Nick Pag, the ruler, faces off with Adam Anderson, and Camden Murphy will try to keep his series points lead going against Kayla Blood, who Barry did have the fastest time in round one, so a great first-round pass for Kayla. Well, Colvinart had this track dialed in last round. Can he continue to win in Minneapolis? Find out next on Monster Jam. Welcome back to Minneapolis for round two of racing. And our first matchup in the second round is Colvinard in the Black Pearl. And he will line up against two-time World Finals champion Todd LaDuke in Megalodon. Cole has two racing wins on the season. Bari Tots had a slow start, but never an easy draw is Todd the Duke. And here we go. It's Megalodon with the lead into the corner. This is where it could be won. Both of them taking it tight, but Todd the Duke too tight, and he hits that pod. Colvernar was on the gas out of that corner well before Todd, and it pays off on that final jump across the finish line. Colvernar continues his winning streak in Minneapolis. 16.506 gets it done. Take a look at the original Super Glue replay. There's nothing like coming around that corner together and seeing your opponent. You can kind of gauge if you're ahead or if you're behind, and sometimes it'll bite you. You'll spin out if you're behind. 
Next up in round two, front clip off of Kraken. Nick Pagliarulo behind the wheel. He will meet the five-time World Finals champion Adam Anderson in Grave Digger. Adam comes in 14-6 and six with two racing wins. This is their first meeting of 2023. And Adam Anderson dialed in with a perfect turn. He's now into the straightaway, into the final corner. Grave Digger has the lead. Kraken trying to make a push. Yeah, Kraken carried a lot of momentum into that first turn, which caused the truck to kind of push wide, handed that easy victory over to Adam Anderson. Here's a look at the super glue glue to the action replay. As you can see right here, the final turn, Adam kind of got a little over rotation here, but he was able to gather it up across that finish line first. Our next matchup in round two is Kayla Blood and Soldier Fortune, who had the fastest time last round. The lane choice goes to the current series points leader, Camden Murphy in Bakugan Dragonoid. This is crucial with Gravedigger winning. Adam Anderson getting those points, moving into the next round. Camden Murphy in a must-win situation. Barney, he clips the pod, and Kayla Blood has the lead. Wow, Kayla gave him that first turn, and Camden make a bigger mistake, and it's gonna cost him the race here, Scott. It may just cost him even more than that. It may cost him the series points lead as Kayla Blood takes the win. Take a look at the replay. And Camden was playing catch up the entire race. Here, as you can see, the first turn, he came in a little too tight, clipped that turn pod, that spelled disaster for the rest of the race. The slide continues as we await the unofficial point standings results. We move on in the round, our final matchup. Fitz Team Throttle Monsters, Travis Maury against 14-time World Finals Champion, Tom Men. So Max D against Velociraptor, a trip to the semifinals on the line. And Velociraptor been so good in racing. Tom up on three wheels, he clips the pot, he does recover. Yeah, anytime you lock up the brakes, that's never a good sign, but he's still in the game. Let's see if Tom can pull this one out. Final push here for Max D. He's gonna cross the finish line first. Great come from behind win there for Tom Mentz. Take a look at the original Super Glue Glue to the action replay. I thought Tom was in trouble around that first turn, but he gathered it up and was able to make that final push across the finish line and just edge out Velociraptor. We move on to the semifinals as we take a look at the bracket. It'll be Max D against the Black Pearl and Gravedigger against Soldier Fortune. Colvin Art had the fastest time in round two. Only two will move on to the final round. And we are flying right through the racing bracket. Up next, it's the semifinal round and then the racing finals. Stay right where you are. More Monster Jam from Minneapolis is next. Welcome back to U.S. Bank Stadium for the racing semifinals. Up first is Adam Anderson against Kayla Blood. So Gravedigger lining up, up against Soldier Fortune. Adam coming into this round with a 15 and six record. He is two and oh against Kayla, but she has lane choice, pushes Adam to the right. And that is not a move you want to make as it's paying off right now for Adam Anderson. Wow, Kayla got up on the bicycle, but she's still in the game. Let's see if this last turn pays off for her. Oh, she went a little too wide. Had a strategy to push him over to the right, but he said that right lane, no match for this big Grave Digger truck. Take a look at the replay. I love this first turn by Kayla. She got on the bicycle, but didn't lose too much time. But Adam Anderson nailed that last turn and stretched out his lead. A Grave Digger will move on to the finals. More series points adding up for Adam Anderson. Pulling up to the line, Tom Mentz and Max D. He goes head to head with Cole Vinard in the Black Pearl. Cole gets lane choice. He takes the left lane. And Cole 4 0 so far this year at US Bank Stadium. Much better turn from Tom Mintz from last round, but Covenard nailed that turn as well. This is gonna come down to the final turn. Who's gonna push towards that finish line first, Scott? Black Pro with the edge. We'll look at Max D. We're gonna wow. have to go to the replay. And I think the finish link system here. That's a photo finish if I've ever seen one. There's wow. our finish links timing system. Max D getting the win barely, but barely in Monster Jam is still a win as we take a look at the final bracket. It is going to be an epic race between Tom Mentz and Adam Anderson. Tom did have the fastest time. Barry, who do you have winning this one? I really think Max D, Tom Mintz is riding high. He's confident. I'd like to see a photo finish like that again, Scott. So it will be longtime rivals going head to head here. Five time world finals champion. Adam Anderson, two racing wins against the 14-time World Finals champion, Tom Mintz. Tom, as I mentioned, gets lane choice here. He's looking for his first racing win of the season. It couldn't get any better than this in Minneapolis. Gravedigger versus Max D. 20 years of maximum destruction. And look at Tom Mintz on absolute rails right now. Wow, both of them nailed that first turn, even after that whole shot from Gravedigger. Oh, Tom Mintz. An unbelievable finish across the finish line. What a push for Tom Mintz. Take a look at the replay. I think Adam spun out just a little bit, and that gave Tom just the edge he needed with that right front tire up in the air. 
crossed the finish line first. Wow, what a great win for Tom Mintz and Max D. Tom gets his first racing win of the season. He is on the track with KCG. Tom, a huge congratulations claiming your first racing win of the 2023 season. What was going through your head as you lined up at the starting line against the greatest rivalry in all of motorsports, you and Gravedigger? I just thought it was funny because all these drivers back here, since I sit on the left, they don't think I can turn right. And I've always said, I'm more comfortable turning right, actually, than I am left. But you know, it's been a tough week for me. I lost my dad. We're gonna bury him on Wednesday. But man, that's for him. That went for you, Pops. I love you. Emotions running high for Tom as he gets 12 points with the win. And we take a look at the first BKT overall point standings of the day. Adam Anderson in second, Covenard in third, Kayla Blood in fourth, and Travis Mowry rounds out the top five, four points off the lead. But that is only one competition down, two more to go. And up next, it's a great clip skills challenge. Drivers had a chance to attempt two technical maneuvers on two wheels, or they could do a donut, and they were judged by fans in attendance on creativity, skill, and execution. And of course, wow factor. And with 12 points on the line, let's take a look Look back at our top five drivers from U.S. Bank Stadium. Coming to fit Travis Mowry with the slap wheelie in Velociraptor. Oh, one of my favorite moves. I love a slap wheelie. He nailed that one, too. In fourth place, Ta the Duke gets a long nose wheelie here in Megalodon. Wow, whenever you can just have the composure to balance that truck, it looks like he's going past vertical, but he's got it. And I mean, he walked that thing all the way down. It looks like he's going for a touchdown, Scott. I like that boy. In third place, Bakugan Dragonoise Camden Murphy gets back into it with a nose wheelie into a stoppy. This is trademark Camden Murphy here. Exactly. I mean, he can do this in his sleep, I feel like. Look at that. The truck is not even moving. It's just balanced. What a great job by Camden. In second place, Vintage Tom Mintz setting up Max D for the maximum moonwalk. You know you're comfortable anytime you can stick your hand out while piloting a 12,000 pound Monster Jam truck after doing the maximum moonwalk off that backflip ramp. I'd be afraid a bird would just run right into my hand. And taking the win, Adam Anderson in Grave Digger. Huge slap wheelie here. And then he's gonna add a bicycle for the exclamation point. Wow, that was a great slap wheelie. That's one of my favorite moves in all of Monster Jam. The bicycle takes a lot of balance, a lot of composure, even contending with another obstacle here, Scott. Wow, that was great. For Adam, his four skills win of the season, and he's on the track with KCG. Claiming your fourth skills competition win on the season and showing us combinations like we haven't seen before. A beautiful bicycle, such control. Was it by accident or intentional that you got that truck up on the nose? No, it was a total accident. It just happened to fall in place like that. You know, watching the other competitors go out there, and it does take a lot of skill to balance a 12,000 pound truck on the front two wheels. And, uh, you know, I wanted to attempt that. I want to do that. I want to show that to the fans. But at the same time, everybody got to see that already. So, you know, I told Gio, my crew chief, I got on the radio, he's like, what are you going to do, man? I said, you know, Know, we got to change it up a little bit and we threw a little bit in there on accident at the end so you know what a great victory it is man uh, you know I know like Tom didn't get to finish out like he wanted to on that one but you know where I stand on top right now we're gonna keep heading that way everything going right right now for Adam Anderson and Tom Menz both finishing one and two in the first two competitions they are tied with 23 points and then Camden Murphy Todd LaDuke Travis Mowry Caleb Blood and Cole Bernard absolutely gridlocked Seven points off the lead, so it's going to be a tough battle to distance himself from the middle of the pack. Well, we've got an epic battle for the championship. Two veterans with a long historic rivalry continuing here. Max D versus Gravedigger. Mentz and Anderson coming up. More on Monster Jam next. You're watching round 14 of the 2023 Monster Jam season with Stadium Championship Series Red. The story here so far has been about the greatest rivalry in motorsports, Grave Digger and Max D, Tom Mintz, Adam Anderson splitting the competitions and being tied at the top of the leaderboard. Bari, this has given me all the feels of an old school historic Monster Jam event. It really is, and especially with emotions riding high for Tom Mintz, you know he wants to go out there and win, but I can tell you Adam Anderson is not gonna cut him any slack. It's gonna be just that much more fun to watch because the fans are gonna be the real winners here tonight. Well, is it a coincidence that the two drivers with the most appearances and the most wins at US Bank Stadium here are the ones winning today? I would say it probably is no coincidence. I mean, these guys are highly skilled professional drivers, so they go out here week in, week out. They know what the fans want to see, and they want to win. So, I mean, they're putting their best foot forward, and it's showing. A lot of history here for both Adam Anderson and Tom Mez. There are five drivers tied with 16 points. Camden Murphy, Tyler Duke, Travis Mowry, Caleb Blood, and Colvin Arbari. Which of these drivers do you feel has the best chance to challenge Tom and Adam? 
I really feel like Kayla Blood is really driving confidently. I feel like she has the best shot at really challenging them for that overall event championship here tonight. Let's take a look at the freestyle order. We saw 11 backflips last round, so this one could get crazy. Vendetta kicks off the competition. Max D gets the nice spot. Grave Digger will now be out last as we do have breaking news. Camden Murphy will not be able to compete in freestyle due to a broken rocker arm and camshaft. So Adam Anderson Barry will officially take over as a series points leader. Wow, that's a tough break for Camden Murphy. You never want to not be able to compete, but unfortunately the engine has got to be with you and the engine is not cooperating with him. So this is not good for his overall points for sure for the whole season. Well, as good a driver as Camden is, is there anything he could have done to prevent this? No, I mean, we race these trucks at a high level and they're high performance engines and sometimes parts just fail. It's a really tough break as they continue to add up for Camden Murphy. Now moments ago, Mike Christensen kicked off freestyle and he would fill the clock, but no wow moment here. And that would lead to a score of just a 6.288. So Mike Christensen not getting lightning in a bottle here in Minneapolis. No, it's okay though. He's had a good showing so far in Minneapolis. Maybe next time he can regain that momentum. It's tough going first though in freestyle. Well, it's time to see how well Jamie Gardner's El Toro Loco can handle this track. Last round, Jamie was the only driver who didn't get a backflip in, so maybe some redemption here for the driver out of Fortville, Indiana. It is Jamie's seventh appearance at U.S. Bank Stadium. And last round, I mentioned no backflip. That would cause him to finish last. So definitely needs to have something up his sleeve as El Toro Loco now on the track and well into the freestyle run. Well, he definitely announced his presence there. He picked the biggest ramp on the track and he attacked it right off the bat. So let's see if he can carry that momentum throughout this whole freestyle. If you were in this lineup and 11 other drivers got a backflip and you were the only one that, that caused the streak not to go 12 for 12, how would you be mentally feeling right now in freestyle? I would feel like I need to pull off a backflip. I need to land it and I need to have a wow factor after it because that is something now in today's Monster Jam that you almost have to have to be able to get yourself into that really high eight to nine point bracket. You really have to pull that backflip off. I don't know when the last time we saw 11 backflips in a freestyle run, but we definitely saw it here last round. Jamie Gardner now trying to get it done early. So here we go. El Toro Loco redemption on its mind. And he is going to land this one hard end up on the nose. Time still left on the clock. And it looks like Jamie could be done. He is refired, and this could be the wow moment. You were talking about something big here. Out of the step up, El Toro Loco, huge break check, Willie on the backside. Wow, there's something extra about that extra element of the dirt flying as it came off that wheelie bar. I think Jamie must have heard us up here, man, because as soon as we stopped talking about that backflip, he went right to it, and now it's game on. I'm going to blame that on you when I talk to him. Here we go, El Toro Loco now coming across, trying to just fill the clock here. He's got the backflip. He's got that wow moment jump going over the crush cars. Yeah. Now and over and hard down on the nose. How much can this truck take, Barry? The truck looks great. It looks like there's nothing wrong. There's no tweaked sway bars or anything. He's just going for it. He's attacking this track. The truck sounds great. It sounds like it's making a ton of horsepower. And it looks like Jamie's just out here having fun. Out of Fortville, Indiana, the head owner driver of Overboard Motorsports now uh, multiple years behind his belt, switched over from Overboard. El Toro Loco whipped off the ramp, hard side slab, little body part action flying of El Toro Loco, and he's still going, unbelievable. That's pretty good, you keep going after you lose four teeth. I just counted them, I want you to know, by the way. And he's back on another sky wheelie with dirt flying off the back, I he, love it. He just lost some teeth out of that El Toro Loco body, so a little toothless action on the right side there. Looks good on El Toro Loco. So the run is finished, 8.955 puts Jamie in first place. Take a look at the backflip here on the replay. Great high energy run by Jamie. I feel like if he could have kept that momentum, after the backflip, that little stall might have caused him to not be in the nine point bracket, but it's all right. He's riding high here. And we are just getting started with freestyle, more high flying action on the way when we come back with Monster Jam. Welcome back to US Bank Stadium for round 14. Earlier today, these 12 drivers got to meet fans here in Minneapolis at the pit party, which is always a lot of fun. There's something for fans of all ages. Make sure you head to the pit party the next time Monster Jam is at a stadium or arena near you. 
So here comes Cole Bernard in the black pearl. This is crucial here, Bart. He is in that group in the middle with 16.7 off the lead. And Cole Bernard's been a guy so under the radar, which I, I've said that multiple times. It's hard to believe his average on this series, 8.339, is third in freestyle. So he's getting it done. He's just not getting the wins. Yeah, and it's okay to be consistent like that. I love consistency. That's my name of the game when I'm on the track is being able to fly under that radar just like Cole Bernard is because you know you're going to be a threat every time out there on the track, and tonight is no different for Cole Bernard. And last round, he had a score of 8.088, but to talk about how wild last round's freestyle was, that was only good enough for 11th. When is the last time you've seen an 8.0 anything go all the way down to the end of the pack? That's a great freestyle competition from top to bottom. I mean, anytime the fans can witness something like that, you know Monster Jam did their job there that weekend. His teammate Jamie Gardner has a freestyle lead, bringing El Toro out, getting that backflip finally. That monkey off his back in Minneapolis. Now Colvinar trying to beat that score of 8.955. You know, anytime you have to follow a high energy run, such as Jamie Gardner, El Toro Loco, you really have to think to yourself, okay, what can I do to raise the bar to make the fans really grasp that energy that I'm throwing out there even more? And Covernard's doing a great job right now. I feel like he really needs to attack that backflip ramp at some point. Though. And he's got great visibility with that front clip off. You can see the track, see right underneath of him, see right out in front as well, which is crucial here when you're navigating these landmines. You mentioned the backflip. He must have heard you as well, because here comes the Black Pearl into the backflip ramp. He skies it high. He's going to break check. He's going to land it hard and go saved it. We almost had a back-to-back -back flip, but almost doesn't get it done. Take a look at the original Super Glue glue to the action replay. Cole Bernard approached that back flip with a lot of momentum, and he landed it. He just got a little too throttle happy there on that right there at the rebound, and it just caused him to flip back over one more time. That was cool, though. Next up is two-time World Finals champion out of Peoria, Arizona, Todd LaDuke. And I'm going to throw at you a mind-boggling stat bar. I know I'm full of them. Todd LaDuke has zero. I said zero freestyle wins in 2023. Wow, that's very uncharacteristic of Todd LaDuke, especially at these late stages in the series. You want to be able to mark yourself down as a 2023 freestyle champion at some point during the season. So with that eluding him, man, that's definitely hard to believe. We, we've talked about his climb from near the bottom of the standings. Uh, he, he's had some bright moments. Has it been more of Todd LaDuke getting accustomed to Megalodon or more of this truck getting accustomed to Todd LaDuke? I think it might be a little bit of both. I know he's had some mechanical issues with the truck this season. So he's really just needs to get out of that slump and be able to uh, have that confidence build. I feel like that's huge for Todd to be able to, you know, drive with confidence. Maybe that's something that's lacking for him this season. I don't know if lacking confidence has ever been associated with Todd LaDuke, but we'll go with that because something has definitely been going on in freestyle. And he's got that truck now leaning to the left sway bar issues as he may try to get this thing right, hitting something. Maybe going over a bicep. He's heading the backflip ramp. He's going to take this with the truck all the way over to the left. We'll see how he lands a Megalodon coming in slow. And he gets his sky. He's going to try to clock it, but too far on that right side of the Monster Jam truck. Wow, man. That's unfortunate for him. He twisted that truck in midair on the backflip, caused it to land hard on that back tire. And it looked like he broke a four-link bar, man. Tough break for Tyler Duke. Next out of the track, it is Velociraptor's Travis Mowry. He has to beat an 8.346 to move past Cole Bernard in the overall event point standings. It's only his second appearance at U.S. Bank Stadium. He's a driver you and I have talked about a lot in racing, not so much in freestyle because he has been near the back of the pack, which I, I think having watched Travis throughout his career in arenas and stadiums is a little surprising for me. When I talk about surprises, I think I'm more uh, intrigued to the fact that Travis Mowry hasn't been able to get it right in freestyle than Todd Ledoux. I feel like Travis Mowry is just tipping the iceberg when it comes to his freestyle career inside of Monster Jam stadiums. I feel like this is his first time really being able to have such great equipment underneath of him with Team Throttle Monster. The fact that he's here performing at a high level in racing, I think it's only going to get better as time goes on for Travis. Now, I think we're just waiting for a big breakout moment from him. 8.955 is the score to beat from El Toro Loco. Travis could be a candidate for breakout driver of the year if he continues to put things together. Now up over the crushed cars on the far side of the track. Track. That beautiful blue Velociraptor truck riding this track like he's done it quite a few times in his career, which we know he has. It gets some great air, nice featherweight jump. 
You see the fire-breathing dinosaur here. You see the, the fire flame spitting out of that exhaust. I wonder if that's just a, a condition where the truck might have a little too rich of a fuel mixture going on. But every time he comes off a jump, you see that flash. So let's keep an eye on that, make sure he can continue his whole freestyle run. Now back of the four side again. Great jump, lands nice on all four BKT tires. Comes back around, turning in now to the backflip ramp. So we're going to see one out of Travis Mowry as Velociraptor lines up, gets a nice angle, has great throttle rhythm here, keeps it moving, perfect. gets the backflip, and lands it beautiful. You said perfect. I agree 100%. All right, let's see what he can do in these last few seconds of freestyle. This is where you really get that fan score. Huge air. Big time air, almost 180 degrees, and now he's going on a wheelie, so he goes for a combo jump into the wheelie. 8.874 is the score. Take a look at the super glue glue to the action replay. Picture perfect backflip here from Travis. I couldn't have landed one any better myself. And then to combo it up with that huge air off the step up, man, that landing will get your attention, Scott. Speaking of action, Jamie Gardner has the freestyle lead. Can he hang on for his first win of the season? Find out when freestyle continues next on Monster Jam. This is Stadium Championship Series Red in Minneapolis. One of these 12 superstars on this series will earn an automatic bid to compete at World Finals 22 in Nashville. And to get your tickets to World Finals, head on over right now to MonsterJam.com. While we were away, Matt Pagliarulo would get out on the track. He would get to compete, but mechanicals again affecting his run. He would finish with a score of 6.029. And next up, out of Lafayette, Louisiana, Kayla Blood and Soldier Fortune. This is her second start here, Bori, at U.S. Bank Stadium. She has one freestyle win on the season, but I want to see Kayla Blood elevate her game, and tonight in Minneapolis is a perfect opportunity for her to do that. You say perfect opportunity, and I couldn't agree with you more, Scott, because we just saw kind of like Jester didn't have a really great run, so now this is her opportunity to bring the fans back to life and really give them something all awesome. Oh, oh no! Right over! Almost a front flip, she's gonna save this thing! Wow, that's the wow factor she needs. Let's see if she can continue on, though. That is definitely the save of the night here at U.S. Bank Stadium, but the score, 8.200. Take a look at the replay. Oh, man, she really had the crowd in her palm of her hand right now, Scott, because of something like that, you don't get to see every day at Monster Jam, so to be able to continue on definitely would have put her in contention for the win. Here comes the 2019 co-rookie of the year, Nick Pagliarulo in Kraken. He's got one freestyle win on the year, but another stat that concerns me, Barry, he's missed three competitions. So for Nick this season, it really has been go big or go home. It's that risk versus reward mentality. And right now, I think he's willing to take that risk here tonight. Absolutely. I feel like that's the only way Nick knows how to compete. And he competes at a high level every single time out there. And tonight's not going to be any exception. I can see Nick is ready for freestyle here tonight. If you were killing a young driver, you're coaching Nick Pagnarulo, who has that zero to 100 mentality where, where it's just full throttle all the time. What would you say to him to maybe get it to dial it back a little bit and try to be a little more consistent on the track? There's a fine line there. You don't want to take away a young competitor's fire, but at the same time, you got to have be able to harness it and, and to be able to harness it and know when to pick your battles, to pick your fights. And I feel like Nick is just now learning that with this season. I feel like he's going to get better and better as time progresses. And here comes a great job, nice break check. So a little finesse act. And did go all the way over, wanted a combo move, and he gets it. Your score to beat 8.955. Jamie Garner has held on to that for nearly half the competition, and Nick Pag, the ruler, now trying to take it away from him. It's going to be fun to see as Nick's career progresses, as he gets that recipe dialed in for freestyle week in and week out, to be able to pull off these great finishes uh, consistently. And I feel like if he can just add consistency to his, his uh, performances, the sky's the limit for Nick. Yeah, when he does go big and he wins those freestyles, it, it, it's some runs for the ages, runs for the record books for Nick Pagliarulo. He's got to dial it up though right now, get a little more momentum going. Comes right over that single log on the backside. Here we go. Now it's going to pick up Nick Pagliarulo cracking, heading for the backflip. Got to turn it into the right. Didn't like that angle. Going to back it up. I don't like to any driver back up, but on a backflip, I'll take it. And here comes Kraken, skies it, sends it over, and he gets the backflip, but too much rotation. And that puts Kraken on his hood. Take a look here at the original super glue, glued to the action replay. So close from landing that backflip. Even if he could have put this into maybe like a bicycle save or something, man, that would have made this crowd go crazy. But he just had a little bit too much rebound there. 
You know, how do you stop an over-rotation on a backflip, Brad? I know Nick is celebrating right now, but it just seemed like a little too much, right? Yeah, a little too much, but it's hard to know where you're even at sometimes when you're landing backflips. Well, speaking of landing backflips, a driver who's landed a ton in his career is on the track. 14-time World Finals champion Tom Mentz in Max D. He is tied with Adam Anderson for the event lead. So a huge opportunity here for Tom. He has done so well in this stadium in his career. One freestyle win, three overall event championships here. So if any driver is going to come out here and get the fans to give somebody a nine, it's Tom Mintz. Oh, without a doubt, Tom Mintz, he's putting Max D through the paces already. And this is awesome, this special story, being tied for the lead here coming into freestyle. That means you have to bring your A game and leave it all out here on the table. Now he's been riding high with emotions. We talked about that. It's, it's got to be tough for any driver to deal with, with personal conflict, personal heartbreak, and still come out and compete at a top level. And Tom Mintz is defying the odds right now and defying gravity in Max D. One thing I love about Max D is such a unique truck, front engine design, coil over shocks. It reacts differently from every other Monster Jam truck on the track, and Tom makes it work for himself. I love it. You see a lot of that rear bounce on the jumps, which allows him to do a lot more technical combo moves, and he has become so famous for doing that. Now he's got to slow up just a little bit, trying to find his next move here. As we see a shot of the backflip ramp, he is turning into it. I thought he was going to do that. Threaded the needle, gets where he needs to be, and here comes Max D. 20 years of maximum destruction and a huge backflip for Tom Mensborg. He is trying to take that event championship away from Adam Anderson. I mean, that was picture perfect throttle and break at the same time for Tom Mintz to be able to land that backflip and now here he goes on throwing caution to the wind. So a lot of time left on the clock. He's got a deep track in front of him and he comes now right over the crush cars. Big time air and there's that flip up from the back end into a stoppy. That's what I'm talking about. That is Tom Mintz. Vintage Tom Mintz. The momentum moonwalk. I love this move here and he had his hand out the window saluting the crowd as he's doing it. How much confidence does that take, Scott? It, it takes a lot for a driver to stop their freestyle run, to know you're going to get a stoppy, to know you're going to get a moonwalk, to, to say, hey, you know what? I've given you the big air. I'm going to do what I do best. And now he's rocking a donut here in Max D. Wow, I think he stopped short of that donut. I, the truck rocked up on two tires. But what a great finish to a great event here for Tom Mintz. Yeah, he's having a heck of a night. Let's take a look right now with the original super glue glued to the action replay. 9.379 new leader. Backflip, huge backflip, paired with that momentum moonwalk that we're going to see right here. I really feel like that sealed the deal for Tom taking that first place points. As you mentioned, Tom does take the lead. As we take a look at our freestyle leaderboard, Jamie Garter in second, Travis Mowry in third, Cole Bernard in fourth, Kayla Blood currently rounding out the top five. Two drivers still left to come, and they are two good ones in Bryce Kenny and Adam Anderson. Tom Mintz has the event championship within his grasp, but Adam Anderson has his eyes on the prize. Will it be Max D or Gravedigger? Find out when Monster Jam comes back. Welcome back to round 14. Adam Anderson and Tom Mintz were tied coming into freestyle. Tom has the freestyle lead, but Adam is still to come. So the event championship will be decided here in a few moments. It has been a battle for the ages between these two. Tom has done everything he has needed to do to win the event championship. We will see if Adam Anderson is up to the task for his longtime rival. Now, earlier just moments ago, Bryce Kenny attempted his run. He would go for the backflip, couldn't get the save, and the fans in Minneapolis gave him a 7.188. And now here we go, the final driver of the night, Adam Anderson in Gravedigger. He needs to win freestyle here, Bari, to win the event championship. Otherwise, it goes to Tom, but more importantly, he will get the series points lead. When we leave Minneapolis tonight, Adam Anderson will be back atop the stadium championship series red leaderboard. And with that alone, you kind of feel like Adam is riding with confidence. I mean, he comes out here knowing he's got to win freestyle to win this overall event championship. And he's taking over the overall points lead for the season. I mean, it's really, he's playing with house money at this point. He's really going to have to turn the fans on and do something spectacular to top Tom Mintz's run. And he won here last round, which is second career win at U.S. Bank Stadium which tied him for first all time with Cole Venard and Becky McDonough. So some good company in there for Adam Anderson. For sure, and Adam is flying high here in this freestyle. I mean, he's got great momentum, the throttle rhythm. 
is reminiscent of his dad, Dennis Anderson. You knew when Dennis was on the track, and just like the same with Adam. I mean, he is riding high out here tonight. This, this truck is held together for a, a week in and week out. Gio, his crew guy, has got this truck dialed in, and Adam is not scared to put it through his paces. And that's what cost Adam last year the series championship, because the truck wasn't cooperating with him. It was gremlins after gremlins after mechanicals, and right now, no gremlins to be seen. A backflip, however, is to be seen. He goes low, he lands it hard. Could have got a moonwalk there, has to get shut off here for a second, and he will refire and get ready to come back out for a wow moment. All right, let's see if he can match Tom's energy. Oh, huge, huge air. air. Look Adam at Adam Anderson made the biggest air of the night so far at US Bank Stadium. Those landings get your attention, I can tell you for sure, but Adam's adrenaline is riding high as he's tacking that from a cross thread position. Can he save it? Yes. Here's that Ragged Edge Gravedigger style. Seconds ticking away. You just find anything you can hit. Bicycle across the track. Looking for his fifth freestyle win of the season, which would lead the series. Still got time for one more big move. He is gearing up, and Gravedigger again skies it across Minneapolis here. What a run so far for Adam Anderson. I think he's finally shutting it down, but an amazing run. Take a look at the original super glue glued to the action replay. Man, there's so much action here, Scott. I don't know where to begin. His backflip was awesome, and then his huge air off the step up. Never mind the landing ramp. Let's just jump right over it. I, I think he, he, he did just that. He didn't care. At that point, he was ragged edge, all about throwing caution to the wind and getting it done. 9.543 is the score. And that score will put Adam at the top with his series leading fifth freestyle win. Tom will finish second in Max D. El Toro Loco takes third, Velociraptor in fourth, and Black Pearl finishes in fifth. But a great freestyle competition all around. Too great from Minneapolis. How do you top that on the series? Man, that was a great weekend of events from Minneapolis here. I think it just gets better and better as we go on. These competitors are really gelling this time of the year. So with a freestyle win, Adam Anderson will get 12 points as we take a look at the final overall event championship leaderboard of the night. He's going to win the event championship by one over Tom Mentz. Travis Mallory finishes in third, Cole Bernard in fourth, and Caleb Blood rounds out the top five. Right now, let's hear from the overall event champion, Gravediggers, Adam Anderson. What an epic battle it was tonight between my arch nemesis, Tom Mintz, Max D. Um, you know, he snubbed me out in racing in the finals. I wish I could have got that win, but he took it. And then we go into the skills challenge where he normally shines. Thankfully, I went before him, threw down a little bit of different stuff, took the win, but then it came down to freestyle. It was gonna take one point. He was in the lead. I had to get one point above him and I was able to pull it off. But I'm gonna tell you right now, the Gravedigger gods were riding with me because I was going wild. You know, this weekend was a little more emotional than most. And uh, it was, uh, you know, Tom Mintz, he may be my arch nemesis. He may have, you know, pushed me to my limits. But at the same time, man, he lost his father this week. I couldn't imagine that. I knew his dad, Bill Mintz. So I didn't want to give it to him because I knew Tom wouldn't accept that. I wasn't going to lay down. But I can tell you right now, that old man was riding with me tonight. I dedicated the win, the overall event win, freestyle to him. Thanks, Tom, for everything you've done, but thanks for your dad for bringing you to us. Next up for this series, we head south to Jacksonville, Florida for one round at TIAA Bank Field. So make sure you join us for Boring with Sour. I'm Scott Jordan, and we'll see you right here next time on Monster Jam.